thank you to everybody, uh, all my coaches that were here, uh, the general manager, especially my teammates. Uh, you know, we're, we're brothers. So it's uh, what a game. It was a lot of fun. The moment to mess, nature wise. Take it slow, let it go, roll down all the windows. <laughs> This is a piece of my heart, uh, being here, the people here, uh, I love you guys. Hello Basket News viewers, I have today a very, very special guest. I will not be, uh, every, the, I will not be calm to say that this is what one of the best uh, foreign players that ever played uh, in Lithuania, Czech Aitzen. Is this uh, a good uh, way to present you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know that uh, we had a lot of uh, good things happen when I was here and uh, I appreciate what you said. That's that's very nice. How do you feel in Vilnius after uh, all these years? This is your first time, or not? Maybe what you uh, you have been here with uh, Unix or something. Yeah, we. But that was you know uh, so quick. This is actually a visit, so it's it's very comfortable. Uh, feel very good being here, and uh, it's it's been uh, very warm regards from everybody too. So it's been great. When you don't see a person for. Uh, a lot of time because we don't see you on social media, we don't see you on the internet. What are you occupied with? What do you do in your daily life right now? Can you tell a little bit more, uh, not where you're living, I guess, but what is your daily life? Well, daily life is pretty much, uh, you know, helping raise my 15 year old twins. So getting them to and from different practices that they're doing and uh, just really being a dad. Uh, I also help with my father's a basketball coach in the States, so I help him with his team also. So I don't Who coach. Who is he coaching? I don't coach, but I like to, to help the kids. What is your father coaching? Uh, high school basketball okay. in uh, South Carolina. So he was actually my coach. So now he coaches his grandson. So it's kind of a nice, uh, nice thing. So as I understand, your children are also occupied with sports. What kind of sports are they into? Uh, Basketball for my son, which is interesting because uh, that's only been in the last couple of years. Before that, we didn't want to push him into anything, and he's really, he's really falling in love with basketball right now. So that's what he does. And my daughter just absolutely is fanatical about volleyball. So she's having a lot of fun with that, and uh, she's really getting after it. Because I know uh, your wife played volleyball yeah. you played basketball so the apple didn't fall off uh, <laughs> from and, the tree and it's funny because we tried to push the apple far away from the tree because <laughs> <laughs> uh you know we know about you know the expectations of that for our kids but somehow i <laughs> just uh that's just something that they love what does your son say watching those highlights of chuck hateson being in uh, ritas being in barcelona maccabi we've actually kept it pretty like, uh, they really don't know a lot about my life over here. Uh, it's been pretty interesting. Uh, this is the first time they've really gotten to see uh, a little bit of, like, uh, what, what it was like. You know, they know I played, uh, obviously, but they don't know the extent of what it's like to play basketball in Europe. So it's this has been really interesting for them, too, to see. The other thing about you, you don't have a phone. This is a, the biggest <laughs> legend about Chuck Aitzen that he didn't have a phone in 08, 09. He doesn't have a phone now. I, that is a misconception. I've always had a phone and it's always uh, for uh, emergencies. That doesn't mean I'm on the phone. Okay. It's just uh, if I'm away from my wife or kids and something happens, they have to be able to get in touch with me. They can get in touch with me. Uh, but... Uh, 
Yeah, you will not see me on Instagram, Facebook, any of the... But why? Why do you have this... Uh, uh, I don't know. It just has to do with how I was raised a little bit. Uh, you know, privacy is very important for me. And uh, I don't know. It's, you know, obviously uh, my wife has it and my kids will have it. So I'm not against it. <laughs> But uh, just just always been kind of a private person. Uh, I was talking to uh, Martinas Getsavichus and he told me that you bought a phone when you were in Vilnius after uh, your uh, your children uh, were born in the yeah. U.S., yeah. Yeah, it, uh, I had to be able to get in touch with them <laughs> back home. Uh, you know, before that, you got to think, it's 15 years ago, uh, we had Skype. There are different ways to to stay in touch. Yeah, uh, the, sorry, I will interrupt. They told me about Skype, about everything, and they told me that they were laughing at you at the locker room <laughs> because at that time there were pretty bigger phones, let's right. say, and you bought this with uh, buttons, let's say. Yeah, yeah, uh, just the cheapest thing <laughs> that worked. <laughs> uh, it, you know, it never really, it's not something I ever really thought about or cared about. Uh, I will say that Now having an iPhone, I know why they love them, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but, uh, you know, as long as I can get in touch with my family, I was never, you know, never too worried. How much has Vilnius changed since your time? It's pretty interesting. For us, it has and it hasn't. And I don't know if that makes sense. Like everything seems exactly the same but then you see different things about it. Obviously it's grown. Uh, it's, it definitely feels bigger. Uh, but living in the old town section and being here, that all feels very similar because not a lot can change in this area. But just driving to the arena and being around, uh, you know, you see buildings that weren't there. Uh, you see, uh, so basically just a growth. Uh, it's really becoming a, a big city. 15 years of time for a club like Ritas is really, really long. Mm -hmm. And you see that the organization has changed a lot since then. Of course, when you were, they were playing in the EuroLeague. Now they are playing, let's say, in, the, in other tournaments in the Champions League. Uh, what did you find out through these a few days about Ritas, how it has changed? What do you think about the fan culture that you saw mm -hmm. yesterday uh, in the ceremony? It... Uh... You know, I, I know some things are cyclical. Uh, you know, there's ups and downs in your in your team. So I know that, you know, there might have been some downs, but uh, the trajectory I saw of where the team's going and, and you know, talking with uh, Yoma, just I think it's in a good place. And I think that you're going to see the team continue to rise and, and get back to a bit of its glory. And it's interesting. Uh, the arena... You know, when you play in Europe, you're used to having uh, a group of people like that and they put them off, you know, they have their own little section in the yeah. arena, you know, not, not to bother the most people. Exactly. They get, you know, a section kind of, and that's their thing. So to walk into a, a gym and see the whole gym involved with that kind of uh, passion is quite a, you know, home field advantage i don't know if you know this saying but like it it, it is definitely uh be tough to play against and it would be awesome to play with so it, it's it was very cool i think your son would be more familiar with the nba environment what they see in the nba arenas what did they think about uh, about jeep arena oh you know at first uh you watch them and their eyes are a little you know it's different uh And by the end, he's clapping. And, you know, <laughs> like he's, he's, he's like, okay. So uh, you could definitely see that uh, it, there's a mood and a feeling in the, in the arena and you can get swept up in it. And I think that's, that's great. That's passion. How much basketball do you still watch? Is it NBA? Is it EuroLeague? Do you even watch basketball? I do. I love basketball. Uh, I was just talking to my wife. Uh, my son started playing AAU, and that's kind of like youth basketball, not uh, with a school. And I can go to a gym and watch random games all day long. I just love basketball. I love to watch it. So if there's a game on, uh, the equivalent would be, 
you know, if there's fourth division Lithuanian team playing somewhere, I'll, I'll probably watch. Wow. That's how much I love it. We're watching uh, Chuck Aitzen from his time in Strasbourg team <laughs> yeah. and yeah. his game against uh, Lietuvos Rytas. What do you think uh, about this game? This was a lot of fun for me because I was getting to play against Marionis Petravius, who I played with in college. So for four years I played with him. And this is the first time I got to see him uh, after that. So I was really excited uh, to get to play against Ritas. But you, you were good in that game. Uh, you, yeah. were, you were going against Ritas. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, you know, I, at this point, uh, just trying to make a name for myself because this is a little bit before, you know, people knew who I was. <laughs> is it fun to, to remember these kind of things? I like that because that's Yoma giving me an elbow. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about <laughs> that moment. Uh, because a year after, your teammates mm -hmm. and a year, year before, he's elbowing you. That's, that's Yoma. <laughs> <laughs> and I love him to death. <laughs> like uh, He's a, one of those players that you love to have as a teammate and you really do not like to play against. So. But there, yeah. there was these guys, uh, Stepanas Babrauskas, uh, Jomantas, uh, yeah. Donatas Zavatskas, where those <laughs> elbows were uh, like uh, <laughs> breakfast for them. They, uh, they could definitely get under the skin of anybody they played with. <laughs> <laughs> After this video, like a natural question, how did that uh, move to Lietuvos Rytas happen in, uh, in the summer of 2007? Yeah. It was, uh, it was fairly quickly. Uh, Alexander Trevunovich uh, was coach at the time. Trevunovich. Yeah. yeah. And he, uh, you know, I got a phone call from him and he was a tall guard. And so he really liked my game. And he, you know, just laid out uh, how he wanted me to play uh, for Ritas. And I liked what he was selling. And so from then it was pretty quick. We got the GM and the president and everybody involved and it was pretty quick. And that first season uh, with, uh, with Ritas, the stats are pretty good. 12.2 points, 13.2 uh, efficiency. But how did it happen that even after when Ritas went back to EuroCup, you still stay and uh, of course the, there was, uh, I guess, some offers at that time. Yeah, yeah it, uh, I definitely thought uh, I was going to be balled out. I still had a year of contract, but it was kind of the time when there was uh, financial difficulty in Europe. So I didn't know that I'd stay with the club, uh, but I ended up staying. And uh, the first year I was in Ritas, kind of the things I told you, the coach told me he would let me do. I kind of didn't get to do. Uh, <laughs> so I was more of a, uh, you know, stay in the corner uh, shoot three small kinda, forward as it, I remember you yeah, were you were small just forward and we had an unbelievable point guard at that time named Hollis Price who kind of ran the show and the ball was in his hands a lot so you know to me statistically that season I'm actually more proud of a little bit than the season I had that was so big because the amount of times I touched the ball you know and what I did with those moments uh it's actually pretty big for me. So actually, some people might not remember that Ritas that year finished their group in Euroleague yeah. first. Yeah, in a really good group. Uh, yeah. We we really had a nice team. Uh, it kind of all fell apart a little bit uh, at the worst time. And there uh, were injuries, as I remember. Injuries. Wilson uh, Petrao just went out with injuries. Yeah, and one thing that hurt that year is uh, we just couldn't beat Zagiris. You know, it hurt the team's confidence, and uh, it's something that I was very unhappy with. Uh, <laughs> that uh, actually gave me a lot of, uh, you know, for the next season, uh, remembering how that felt. In the off season, it has changed the coach. Uh, Trifunovic went out, and mm -hmm. then came Antana Sereka, who yeah. we we can say is a Lithuanian legend. Mm -hmm. Can you compare a young Serbian coach? with the Lithuanian legend, but with this softer mentality. Yeah, I think uh, when you say soft, you, it comes off as uh, maybe not as tough, but I will tell you, Sarika, he's, he's tough. <laughs> okay. He's tough. He, he knows what he's doing. And what I, tough moments do you remember about Sarika? 
just that we just were this close to being really good. And I hate that he didn't get to finish the year with us because I, I had a lot of fun playing for him, enjoyed, enjoyed him as a coach, uh, and really felt bad when, when he had to step away from the team because, uh, you know, I, I feel like the team was going in the right direction, but just needed something else. I don't remember this, but who changed you to point guard position? Was it Sereka or was it Kurtonaitis? Because both of them are saying that I have done that. It, it is. They both do take credit for that. Okay. <laughs> it, it, it is. I'm not sure. We had a point guard, uh, a guy named Brinko Milosavljevic, and he started the season with us, and, and he was the point guard. And uh, I just don't know that it was clicking with the team. And I think uh, you can go back to the Golden State uh, preseason game. And I did, I moved to point guard there. And Sarika was, Coach Sarika was, you know, the coach at that time. So I do think there were plans to make the move, uh, but I don't know. I know that day one with Coach Curtinitis, I was very, you are the point guard. <laughs> so I, I know that both, take credit and they could both be right i don't know <laughs> like it's kind of a a weird kind of thing what do you think about coach Kurtnaitis? that uh, coaching changed was uh, after a loss to jalgiris in december uh as i've looked into results they weren't that bad as we as we discussed yeah uh, what do you think about uh, coach Kurtnaitis in general what did he gave the team that uh, after that you lifted five trophies yeah um i can't say enough about coach Kurtnaitis. i know uh what he brought to that team was kind of a toughness and kind of, a, I mean, just a swagger. I don't know this this word, like walking into the gym and, and thinking you're the best team in the gym every time you went to play somewhere. So uh, it was more a mental, a psychological I, thing. I think so. Mentally, I uh, just, uh, and this goes for the practices were so hard. Uh, with him when he first came that, I mean, I, f I felt like the games were a walk in the park. Uh, you know, the, the team really got after it uh, when he came because I think some guys were nervous about, you know, will they be cut, uh, you know, playing time, all the things that happen when there's a coaching change. And when he came in, the mindset of that team was it were very hungry and – and he pushed all the right buttons. Uh, so I can't say enough about him. He, he truly uh, was one of the only coaches other than my dad that gave me the freedom. Uh, my whole career never had the freedom that I had uh, with him. So it was, uh, if I could play for him for my whole career, I probably would have if it had worked out. You're saying these really nice words about Kurtnaitis. I was wondering how much in contact you were with with this Rita's family uh, through these years. With uh, well, only with uh, Marianas, uh, because his his uh, wife and my wife played volleyball together in college, and then we played basketball together. So we do have a relationship. Uh, but other than that, it's it's hard uh, because I am the private the way that I am. Uh, one of the bad things I do is I've had some unbelievable teammates over the course of my career and, you know, I'm terrible at staying in touch. <laughs> but uh, I've had guys, you know, like brothers to me and it's just kind of like 15 years, you know, time just kind of uh, slips away. We've mentioned uh, Hollis Price, we're mentioning you a lot. We have to mention Marianas because he it was amazing two years for him in the EuroLeague, in the EuroCup. He was the EuroCup Finals MVP, yeah. as I remember. And everyone was talking about this connection, the point guard center connection. You know, and Kurtonaitis said that you have to build your team to have a good point guard, a good center, and then everybody com comes else around. What can you say about playing with Marianas in that season? Uh, let's see. Having known him in college, uh, if the coach asked him to run through a wall, he'd run through a wall. Like, I can't. He's strong as hell. Yeah, and his mindset is to just outwork you. And really, uh, 
really probably one of the yeah, probably the best teammate I ever had as far as doing whatever needed to be done to win a game. And uh, it was nice having him in the pick and roll because I, I never worried about not being open after the screen. <laughs> he was, you know, and defensively he could play. Uh, and really all of that to say that he's an amazing person too, a uh, really good guy. So he's one of the the reasons definitely that we even looked at Redis to begin with uh, to play because, uh, you know, I had some other offers that were pretty enticing too at the time. And uh, he was a major selling point on why I ended up in Lithuania. Uh, we have to mention, of course, uh, Jonas Winaus because the team GM. Yeah. <laughs> in general, what kind of person he is? How do you remember him? I can say to you, I don't know if you know, but right now he uh, is the general manager of an NKL I was talking, team. Yeah, I was talking to Yoman. He said, you know, he's he's having more success. So I'll always remember him as somebody that had an amazing amount of confidence in my game, even when I was kind of struggling a little bit at times. Uh, and to have that from your president, you know, the, at the time, uh, it's pretty amazing, and uh, I do know there he has issues. <laughs> I'm not, uh, you know, he, he's had his issues, but I, I, I had a great experience with him. Let's say so. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed my time with him here. Was it unusual to see the that uh, free coaches in two years? Was it unusual for you? Yeah, I had a coaching change in college, so our head coach got fired halfway through. So it wasn't something that, you know, was foreign for me. But in-season coaching changes are, are tough. That's Minda. <laughs> Minda. Uh -huh. uh, so, you know, they can go two ways. You can either get really good or the team can just fall apart again because so I thought that uh, Ritas did an unbelievable job with that. Yes, you've mentioned that Ritas that season, uh, they uh, in the 08-09 season, uh, they finished with without Matthew Nielsen, Branko left and you were left uh, alone with uh, Milko Bielica as the only foreigners. Uh, how did you react? Because there were a lot of rumors, I remember at that time, that maybe Chuck Hateson is the next one who will leave, leave Ritas because the financial situation was tense. Uh, yeah, there was about a week uh, where, you know, we had my, our bags packed. Uh, we, we thought we were uh, going somewhere and uh, it was pretty, pretty tough, pretty tough on my wife to kind of, because we had, you know, little kids at the time they were, they were babies so the not knowing about what would happen there uh was interesting and talking about Jonas he made he made an investment in me uh really uh that uh, you know I'd end up having a good season and it ended up working out for him uh as I'm listening to you, you are extremely a family guy all around uh, no matter money even when i talked with uh, with uh, with stapanas uh, with martinez they always mentioned that czech is the most calmest dude in the world you cannot uh, remember any stories with him but uh, can you just talk a little bit more about this your look at basketball not through the money perspective uh yeah i think uh if only one time in my career did I look and say, I need, I need to make the money. Every time, every time I made a decision, it was through the lens of, I've got to listen to the coach, GM, they need to tell me what they need from me because that's how I can best be utilized in a situation. Uh, you know, if I get there and they tell me, you know, something different than what they've told me to get me there, I've, I've never enjoyed that. <laughs> Uh, but I, I, I love basketball, uh, still play, uh, you know, it'll be something I do when, when I'm old, uh, can't move, I'll still try to get out there and, and play. So it, uh, for me, it's just the greatest sport ever. 
Bobrovskas uh, asked me to ask you one question. Uh, <laughs> he told me, uh, uh, ask Czech, uh, how was the parties with Ritas? So, <laughs> so I, I don't go out much uh, at that time, every now and then. But when you're with a team and you do the things that we did, you do have to celebrate. So uh, I will say... Hanging out with him, Yoma, Minda that night uh, was a bad night. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, but uh, that that's not one of my my better uh, <laughs> better nights. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit more about those Lithuanians, about Bobrovskis, Yomantas, uh, Getsevichus, Lukauskis. Um, what are they like off the court in the locker room? Because they, they always talk about, okay, Chuck comes to the practice, he has just one shirt, uh, he, and he co comes in, comes out. There's no no a lot of talk. Of course, in the practice, sometimes he gets nervous for something, but uh, but nothing really special. How did you look at them in, a, in the practice, in the locker room? It, it was different. Uh, after, you know, a few of the guys left, uh, you know, there is a, a brotherhood and a camaraderie with Lithuanian players that's almost different than most places too because the the country is so small. They all know each other. They've all played against each other since they were, you know, young. So they they know each other. <laughs> so you do feel like an outsider to a little, you know, to an extent. But I think, again, so, uh, somebody like Marionis did an unbelievable job integrating me, uh, bringing me in, and really translating things when I needed to know some things or helping me when a joke uh, or something was said so that I can be involved. And and everybody did a really good job uh, of kind of making me feel very, very welcome. So uh, that team, I, I, I tell people, it was special, uh, very close. How did you remember the fan support? Uh, at that time, Ritas played uh, way more games in the in Siemens Arena, now it is called other name. Uh, how did you remember uh, what was like to 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 have this bond with with Ritas fans? Yeah, I think uh, I think Lithuania is a basketball place. I think the, I, I love how much people love the game here, but also understand the game. Uh, that's rare. You go to some countries, um, they think they love their team. Uh, they don't. <laughs> not, not the way that it's, it's you're born in it. And uh, so the fan support while I was here was, was unbelievable. Uh, and I know the, the new arena, or the old arena, new name, uh, when you played a EuroLeague game in there or Euro Cup game in there, it, it was electric. So it was it was a lot of fun at that time. Let's go back to to Euro Cup final four, final eight, final eight in Turin. Uh, how do you remember the team uh, when you were going in that plane? What was your mindset? Uh, because you were you left the Twain without any big expectations. Everybody knew who were the favorites. I think uh, knowing that team uh, sitting on that plane, there was a confidence there that you know why not? Why not us? Uh, you know, I knew we needed to get through the first game. I think it was uh, Benetton. I knew if we beat them, uh, there'd just be like, why not? I mean, we, we could make a run. And uh, I think the team was ready for that. Let's go back to the final with Kimki. Uh, at the third quarter, you had a minus 13 lead and you're going up against these guys like Matze Lampek, Kelly McCarty, Timofey Mozgov. Where do you find the strength to come back and win a title like that? It... It is impressive. I know I was, and I've told a couple people this, the Hema Farm game, the game before, I was exhausted. They they had a guy guard me the whole time, full court. So going into the last game, I was really kind of struggling. So 
the way that we played, the way that Marionis kind of carried us, uh, there are big moments from so many players in that game. Uh, it was it was such a team win. Like I couldn't be more proud of of everybody on that team, and it, it was really it, it was a special win. Who would be your biggest highlight of that game for me personally? Uh, Yomantas block uh, to Lampe. Unbelievable. But, but in that same time period, I, I was sitting out because I had to have a break. And Yoma made like two. He made a little jumper at the foul line and I think he hit a three-pointer. I, I really think that that me being out, us kind of making a run on our own, like those were the big moments for me. I really think Yoma stepped up in that game and, and was just so valuable. Yomantas hitting a free was... Uh was i guess uh, some kind of a celebration for all yeah, the team so so rare <laughs> and i mean and i know i don't know if you'll talk about this but later in the lkl he hits just one of the biggest threes we will talk about that um, we will talk about that so for me like it's just amazing uh big moments and uh and also me as an american understanding it's okay to give these guys the ball they can make plays Because a lot of Americans, when they're over here, they they want to hold it and and make the play themselves. So I thought uh, I I think that Kimki game was the ultimate team basketball win. Uh, you said one thing. Actually, it is a bit underrated. You played in the whole season 30-35 minutes, sometimes without substitutions. How tiring was that season? Uh, extremely, and I know. <laughs> Even uh, Jonas, because uh, he knew I had young kids, he would have us stay at hotels sometimes, even when we were at home, uh, just because he knew we needed, uh, especially me, I, I needed some sleep. And so uh, there was, I'm not sure how much the coaches or everybody talked about it, but uh, I was fried. Okay, uh, let's, watch, uh, let's watch some episodes. This is the cup. Is that right? Yes. LKF Cup. So right here I knew uh, we get that back door. Uh, we need a stop. And the the worst player for us to get a shot in the game got a shot. <laughs> I definitely thought this shot was going in. Uh, and we were going to be down, I think, four at the time. Yeah. So right this there. This is the shot. Right there I thought, okay, <laughs> all right, we But have now, a chance. But now the commentator is saying that Rita's has a chance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they've been overhelping a little bit. So I just wanted to draw the defense and uh, get the best shot we could. And for me, this is when the season became the season. Uh, beating Zagiris at that time, the way we did right there. Uh, this is when... Uh, This is how we started the trajectory up. Tell me, was the anger for Jalgris genuine when you say that you lost uh, f uh, lost to them in the in last season a yeah. lot of times? Anger is kind of a tough word, but it is as a competitor, as somebody that plays, you know, when you get beat and the way we got beat, yeah. E even this one I thought might yeah. go in. Yeah, because he, he hit was, like eight he was, dial he was dialed in that night. So, for for me, like th this was the biggest uh, moment of the season. This this kind of started everything. This was one of the three game winners <laughs> that that we are going to talk about, and uh, not one of them. You were on the finishing end. You were the passing one. Uh, yeah. The first one was this. The second uh, in the Euro Cup final when you passed to Babrowskis mm -hmm. and he hit the free plus six, and uh, of course the Yomanta shot. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've watched The Last Dance, but Michael Jordan like did <laughs> similar things, right. like passing to John Paxson, Steve Kerr. So this is about trust your teammates? or Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and LeBron James the same way. He's going to make the right play in the moment. That's the right play. I could have forced a shot up. I could have. But that's the right play. And... Minda, I trusted Minda all year, so this this is nothing. 
but uh, it was such a big shot. I didn't check it because I'm pretty sure this is your best uh, career game. 41 points, 58 efficiency, and when you look at it, uh, the shooting percentages, 12 out of 14 two-pointers, mm -hmm. 4 out of 6 three-pointers, 5 out of 6 free throws. Yeah, I have I have a couple 40 point games, but none with the the other, you know, the assist and the rebounds all the same. Eight rebounds, eight assists. Yeah, this uh it it was just one of those games where obviously right there I dribble off my foot and get the ball back and just feel like I can shoot. At so, this point, it feels that this man is unstoppable because wherever you gave him the ball, he's going to score. Yeah, it, it, it did feel like that. And this was different because in the other games, uh, you know, I'd have maybe 15, 6, 5 in that niche. But, uh, you know, to come out and score. Do you feel the frustration from the enemy uh, at this kind of game? I, you know, I, I don't usually... I'm usually so focused on what I'm doing. I don't know exactly what, but I did feel bad a little bit for uh, Zukaskis, the yeah, center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's an um, unbelievable career, and it was kind of toward the end. And uh, they were asking him to play a defense that very hard, <laughs> you know. So other than that, no, it was just, one of those nights. Uh, the commentator said that uh, Chuck ate some commentary is not needed. <laughs> <laughs> this is in Lithuanian. I don't know. Uh, it, have you heard about this press conference and rumors? I've, he actually was an assistant coach for me in Unix. So I've talked to him a little bit about this. And I've never heard this part of it, though. <laughs> so they played a drop coverage. Uh, you know, that didn't work. Then they tried to double, and that wasn't working that night. Uh, Later on in the series, in the LKF, they do a much better job, uh, you know, putting a small guard on me uh, to make me work bringing the ball up. So he, he learned from this. I can tell you that at that moment, we don't have a chance. We can't get back to the This nail me to cross is like, a, I don't know, a song in Lithuania. <laughs> What do you think about about this uh, mentality of the coach? Uh, uh, I know that night it had to be tough for him. Uh, this was after the first game of LKL final oh, when okay. you scored 30 points and 38 efficiency. Yeah, I know uh, they still, they made me work. <laughs> uh, he might think it looked easy, but it was, it was very difficult. And uh, yeah. This was a game three of LKL finals. Can you lip read? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not proud of this one. Uh, you know, I pride myself on, you know, trying to keep it together. Uh, but I, I was so tired and I just felt like I was uh, beat around in this game and, and the whistle just wasn't going my way. And so, uh, you know, I even apologized to the referee uh, later on uh, for, for those actions. So, but that was just, that was a time and a moment where I just had enough. You know, you can ask my wife outside of the basketball <laughs> court, uh, you'll find me like this. I'm pretty laid back, uh, but uh, a switch, a switch does go off uh, when I'm on the court and, uh, you know, I have moments like this, you know, that's part of it. But I think you have to play with an edge. Uh, I think that's when you get your best basketball is when you're right below a line of uh, maybe crossing a line or so. Yeah, I think they've lost a little bit of, uh, you know, that right on top of you feeling. Uh, it was it's hot in there. <laughs> it's uh, 5K. Uh, uh, attendance yeah, and the fans are right on you and uh, it's loud and you know their new arena is very nice I played in there with Barcelona you know I don't take anything away from making that move but I think uh, for a hostile environment 
basketball-wise, I think they've lost a little bit uh, because that was a difficult place to play in. And what can you say about that Jalgris core? Yankunas, Achilles, yeah. they're all swell-bowing. Yeah, uh, so I, I really disliked them <laughs> for, for a while. And then I actually got to know them a little bit. And that's always the when you meet somebody outside of the court. When did you get to know them? Uh, Kyle Nattis played for uh, Cuban uh, when I was in Russia. And I talked to Machulius a couple of times. They're just, uh, you know, Yankunas seen him. They're just really good guys. Yankunas is now the president of Zagreb. Yeah, Zagres. I know. I can't believe that. But I can. He played there for so long. He's, you know. But, you know, you... When you're playing against Jagers, all you see is, you know, an enemy. <laughs> <laughs> This is what I talked about. You never, uh, you, you trust your teammates. Yeah. And when Arturas Yomantas hits that kind of shot, you were shocked, I guess. Shot? I mean, obviously, it, Anybody that makes that shot, it's, it's an unbelievable shot. Um, it's interesting because I think that just takes it to overtime, right? But yes. But you can see this game is over. Uh, that shot, we really didn't even have to walk onto the court. Uh, Jagras was beat. Uh, I was uh, in the arena <laughs> that game. I was nine years old at yeah. that time. You made my day. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's the loudest I've ever heard uh, any arena I've played in. Uh, After that shot? Yeah, I think it was deafening. I think it was such a surprise, even to our fan base, Yoma hitting not just the three, but how far he was away from the three-point line. It was just an incredible shot. And I think the surprise with the – it was it was amazing time to, to be there. Do you know this picture? Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised it wasn't worse. <laughs> he uh, he played. That that's the way he played, and that's the way he. Uh, that's the way he lived. <laughs> you have to have some balls to to throw around the, these. Yeah, uh, in Kaunas Sports Hall. Uh, I know that. Uh, that was just. Uh, the emotion of it all like just the verbal abuse he had probably been taking uh he just you know that's how he felt at that time and uh you know probably a lot more of the players wanted to do it too but you know <laughs> a little more laid back but that is uh yeah that's definitely a feeling what was the celebration after the final So after this game, probably because of this, uh, we had to, I don't know if you guys know this, we had to drive through a park yes. because they were throwing bottles and shaking the bus. And it was, it was pretty, it's pretty, you were uh, scared, uh, scared, not scared, but pretty tense. Like if we stayed around longer, it could have got worse. So, you know, we're really just laughing uh, about the whole thing, <laughs> even in the bus, even with bottles hitting the bus. So, uh, That was, uh, some people like to win on their home court. Uh, that gives them, uh, you know, you celebrate at your arena with your fans. There's something special about uh, winning in the, the opponent's arena and, and, you know, seeing their faces. Okay. How would you recap your whole time in Ritas? What, yeah. what were the, I don't know, top five things about, I don't know if you can name them right quickly, but uh, what would be the summary of your time in Ritas? I think I came here and, you know, I was, I would say I was older, you know, 27, 28 when I got here, but I still think I was still just a boy. I think I left Ritas uh, a man, uh, learned how to, uh, you know, just felt older and wiser after being here. Uh, just, I think it was the perfect fit for me at the time. Uh, and honestly, and this is, if it hadn't have been for so much practice, I would have probably signed more. <laughs> But at the time I was just so tired. I just couldn't see myself doing, cause we, 
we got after it in practice. And uh, it's one of the reasons I signed with Maccabi as, uh, you know, they said, you know, we'll practice maybe twice a day, but it won't be as long as what you what you've been doing. So Kortonaitis is responsible that didn't we have uh, didn't yes. we didn't have Aitzen for uh, many I many years? I wouldn't say responsible. I think any coach that came in at that time, that's how you coached. Uh, the year before, I think we practiced more. Uh, you know, the Serbian coach. I think uh, that's just how it was. I just didn't think if I wanted to have a, a longer career and at this point I'm thinking of myself as you know being able to provide for my family I needed to go somewhere where my body wouldn't break down and uh, no but you know I absolutely loved my time here uh, and just played the best basketball in my career and just really really enjoyed everything about it why did you end your career? I don't know if it's early, but yeah. 34, 35. Yeah, I get, I actually get this question quite a bit. Uh, I spent my last two years in Russia and I didn't have my family. I left them in the States because it was, it was hard living, but I knew that if I played two more years in Russia, I could probably retire comfortably. And, uh, you know, I was okay with that. So, I definitely probably left three or four years on the table. Uh, you know, I could have played much longer. I was feeling good, but I needed to get home and kind of get my life started in the States uh, with my family. Kids were starting school and uh, that's pretty much why I made the decision. Breedis fans and, and players and everybody, I think, uh, just the most success, uh, raise trophies, uh, play good basketball, uh, fans always, uh, trophies for Rita at this time is pretty rare. It, it isn't that, uh, uh often uh, in your time. That's, your time. that's what I wish though, <laughs> because I feel like these fans deserve it. Uh, you know, being in that game last night, seeing the passion, uh, you're trending in the right way. Uh, and, you know, just to be as successful as this team can be. And that's what I wish for. Will we see you again in Lithuania? <laughs> uh, we'll probably have uh, some kind of reunion at some point, I imagine, where they try to get everybody together. And uh, I'll for sure be back for that. Maybe your son will play for Ritos. <laughs> <laughs> Problem. We'll see. He uh, he's doing. But Jaigris right. is not an option for you. Uh, it would it would have to be the right offer. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So thank you, Chuck. Thank you, viewers. I I lost a bit of my voice, but uh, I guess we coped pretty well. It was really nice meeting you. Actually, yeah, it's great meeting you, and uh, you did a great job. This is uh, it's a good interview. Thank you.